recording on this computer and it is the Friday the 18th of November and I'm so happy that we're meeting. <laughs> yes, finally, finally. I think um, the rest of the group may have forgotten because Kiermin is uh, in a, um, her, she's at her nephew's birthday party or something. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry that we haven't really managed to tee up all together with Nancy and Anais because I was really, but I know exactly what it's like. When I was president of the Toastmasters Club at the UN, mm -hmm. there are seven executive members, eight with the immediate past president. And I was, basically, we had an executive meeting once a month. And I always wanted to have at least one or the first meeting with everybody together so that we can discuss what are you going to do and and to really make a plan, an agreed plan together, a working plan, basically. And it never happened. It never happened. And as president, we have one, a one-year term and then we hand over. Mm. And I was president in 2012 and then 2017. Mm. And now the new president is um, working with a lot of things. I set up the um, the web page, the... Um, the YouTube channel, bought the video equipment and the computer and set up a, uh, a Google account. And the continuity, passing over the information, the handovers, somehow it just never really worked. People who are in the club now have no idea of the foundation that has been laid and what people have been doing in the past. And at the UN, we have a very high turnover of staff, so you can't really hand over that easily. Mm. And I'm getting a similar sense of frustration <laughs> with the Women's Federation where I'm thinking, oh, how are we ever going to get things managed? How are we going to really um, create a pattern of accountability and set up uh, routines that can be followed regardless of who the people in the positions are? Firstly, because even the positions have not been clear yet. So that's... That's, that's my big, big goal because I actually want to let it go. I want to let it go and know that it is in good hands. And to a large extent, I feel I have done that with the Toastmasters Club and with other things that I've been doing, but it's never good enough. There's always room for improvement. Well, I suppose there is and you can do your best. I think um, anywhere where people are vol volunteering, you are going to have this sort of problem. Because... And, and that's my my issue right now. What I've been really working on is that document which is saying what I have done so far, what I'm prepared to continue to do, and what I will only do conditionally against payment, you know, mm -hmm. because these are the things that need to be clarified. Because now suddenly, oh, Mike Belcom is prepared to pay for a website. Well, I was negotiating with the one who originally set up the website and I ended up getting another bill for the domain, which I had paid in the middle of the year, which I understood was going through till the middle of next year. And suddenly there's another bill due now, about four times the cost of the other one, I think 120 something euros, which is due right now for the next period from December to December next year. So I was trying to figure out what to do with that, how, how it's working. And I was negotiating with Vigdis in Norway and ultimately when I don't, it's the same thing. It's a continuity. Somebody set it up, mm. deserted it, dropped it, absolutely deserted it. Mm. And then the uh, Carolyn, actually, when she named me as the PR manager of WFWP, they, they told me to just close it down because nobody knows what to do with it. Mm. And I refused because I've seen in, in, in Austria, we I had taken care of a web page for, I don't know how many years I can, I'll have to look up the records. And then it was just closed down and all that historical information. is just yes, and that somebody's um, hard work and lots and lots of hours. Are you financing it, the website? At the moment, the Wix um, website, because I paid the domain, I reported that and I got a refund. Oh, okay. That's WFWP Oime. And I can sit and I believe, and I was trying to, I think I checked it. I believe that the next bill will also go to my bank and it will be deducted automatically. 
And in that case, I would also inform uh, OIME and send them the bill and I'm sure they'll reimburse me. But what I really wanted to do was to deal with it beforehand that yes. the decisions are made by those who are really prepared to take the responsibility. Because That's as you said, as long as you've only got volunteers jumping yes. in and hopping around in and out, then there, there is zero accountability and zero continuity. And that, that doesn't work. And um, even the issue with the website, um, even if you are guaranteed to be there for the next five decades or whatever, it should not be going through your account. Because um, last time we had Ria reporting um, finances, I don't remember mention of the of the website. She mentioned that they, she, she um, mentioned and it. that was our surprise that it, she just mentioned that okay. it was for the website, whereas actually. It was a reimbursement to me because the payment came out of my account. Yes, but we do need that. And um, what happened with the email address? That's also very unfortunate. I'm. I was a bit surprised. I mean, now because the other thing was Mitty was and and Anne Schaffner were also asking about a Google Drive. And in the meantime, I saw it was probably rumors that Gmail is going to provide one or two terabytes of storage space per person. So I thought, okay, well, why should we pay mm. for storage because mm. we've only got 15 gigabytes when we're going to get one terabyte anyhow? So mm. I didn't pursue that. However, um, the Gmail account that we had was attached to Elizabeth Riddle, and I try I've got her... Um, her notification with her birthday on it and I tried different combinations of her birthday and I I, I mean I know I, I had tried that before and I couldn't get in so I don't think that address is actually available even the message the way it came to please um set up the google drive with the wfwp europe uh when that address has been taken even though the person has died yeah. If that account has not been actually, I even read in the Google conditions that um, apart from not being um, inheritable, they're also not um, once they've been used. That address is taken forever. You can't reclaim. You can only use a, a a derivative of that address. You could put a plus or a minus or a one or a or a five or something and use. But that particular address can never be used again. You see, we 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 definitely need a better system than that. It's it's not just about somebody passing on, but it also reflects that normally you have one person who has all the burden, um, and they're not able to share it. But I I hope things can be different. I'm uh, the requests that I've had. I mean, I'm feeling I'm really glad grateful that you're here now because I've been feeling quite um, overwhelmed mm. with the requests that are in my mailbox because I want to get that document finished of what I'm prepared to do and what I'm not prepared to do. Because even the request to research the storage space, the web page, the email address, all of these issues are things that I think need to be taken care of more professionally and with accountability and whether we have somebody apparently there there is funding available for something and I feel that also needs to be clarified and addressed by people who are prepared to really take responsibility for it and you can't just leave it so inofficial and expect volunteers to just jump in all the time and and that's what I feel like I'm being called on you know host this zoom meeting and do that and I said to Renata she's we've got a meeting on Mon on Sunday the painting competition and um because I had the experience when I did a a meeting on Carolyn's account because I set up the settings for the meeting the way I wanted it the mm. next executive meeting that we had with Carolyn suddenly we couldn't chat anymore Suddenly, all the settings became global. I could not even set the settings for this particular meeting without affecting everything on her global European account. Mm. And that's when I got my own Zoom account paid. And so since then, the Austrian group asks me for my Zoom link for mm. their meetings. 
And um, then when I pointed out to her now that we've got the, uh, as Mitty pointed out, that we now have the uh, a European women's Zoom account, that's all very nice, but it'll be the same issue. It depends on who's administering it and which meetings are actually taking place on it. Yeah, that's a very important um, issue. I, I had an informal uh, meeting with Mitty. She just wanted to find out about the young people. And I mentioned that one of the biggest problems in all of our movements is that you have one person taking on so much responsibility to a point where they cannot anymore. And for younger people, you know, they just stop everything and leave immediately. Yep, yep. Um, I'm, I'm quite new on the European platform, but I have seen it in Africa. And it, it's very sad because this person was dedicated, but it reaches a um, breaking point for them. Mm -hmm. And the only option that they see is to just completely leave. So we really need to have that. And I think I agree with you. Some things need to be handled professionally. So that's what, so I, my push, my drive, my incentive is to provide a proposal, but even providing a proposal is uh, a lot of work. <laughs> it takes, it, ta it takes a lot of research and a lot of time and, uh, you know, for me to just do that on the side <laughs> in the meantime when I'm trying to do all these other things, it's, it's not that straightforward and that's why it hasn't been done yet, but it's still on my agenda. That's very important and I think it's also really important in the context of this group. Because yeah. we also we also need to, as the rest of the group, we also need to come um, and say, okay, out of all of this, I am prepared to do this or that. And that's what I was hope. That's what I really foresaw from the first meeting, and that's why I was really hoping we could all come together. And I thought, in lieu of that, if we don't really get a chance to all meet together in person in this Zoom meeting. I'll provide the recordings and a website where we can have, the, and we've got the the WhatsApp group where we can have the exchange. And I want, I was considering perhaps a Facebook group or some other platform where we can communicate uh, more informally just to maintain a live relationship so that we can keep things under control even when we're not meeting um, at the exact same time so that we can still keep the communication open. So that's yeah. what I was hoping to do. And that's why I was also feeling a little bit... Uh, Inadequate because I had not sent any notification out about the meeting today. But since the first time we met, that was my desire, my goal for me. Uh, until we as a group decide a different time, I'll basically stick to 7 p.m. Friday nights as, think, yeah. as a time for us to meet. And if we and I would I am open to suggestions for another time, an alternative time with the goal of trying to meet all together. Yes, I think we might um, start, you know, we should start looking at that. We might have to find a day or any day or time where we're all available. It does not matter the day of the week, just if we can do that. Yeah, yeah. And the good thing about this group is that I don't feel that anybody is being forced. I feel that um, everyone is genuinely passionate about it. I mean, I've only met, physically, I've only met Anais and Kyungin. Um, but even with uh, Nancy and, of course, yourself, that's a good thing that nobody was really pushed. Everybody was happy. Yeah, I, I really am grateful for that and want to keep it with that frequency of, of mm. willingness and accountability because I believe we can be extremely successful when there's a passion there, when there's a desire to do it. And um, it's really that consciousness that is almost holding me back because I know how I feel about the whole thing and I absolutely respect the situation of each one of you and I'm so inspired that each has a different area of expertise where we can 
literally complement each other. And I see a, a very high potential there, which can really harness the voluntary capacity that we have. And I, I see when we manage that, that it can be the platform that we can, the foundation that we can actually build on to get a lot more going. Yes, I think so. And um, hopefully we'll have um, bigger capacity. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I'm so inspired by what Women's Federation could do. And so often I get so depressed by when I see what happens. I mean, just just an example, the um the General Assembly, mm -hmm. when I looked at the YouTube recording, I was so disappointed that all of the um the moderation and the the speakers was all in gallery view. You couldn't even you couldn't even see the faces of the people who were talking very clearly. So I asked Leon to send me the speaker view from the Zoom account. And first she said, uh, you know, look at the YouTube. I said, I've already looked at the YouTube. I want the speaker view. Then she sent me the link. I downloaded it and I had a look at it. And she specifically said, please do not, I don't know whether she used the word share or publish. Mm. And I respect that. But I actually wanted it for myself to see how I did. Mm. But I think each one of us can really benefit from it. And I when I'm adminning a Zoom conference, I always make sure that I spotlight the speakers so that you can see them in the full view, in the speaker view, in the in the recording. But and I'm a bit surprised that they didn't do that. Oh, I didn't watch the YouTube video, but when I was in the meeting, I, I really thought it was like that. Well, it depends on your own setting, but the recording depends on the setting of the person who is actually making the recording. And if they don't set it, to the speaker view, then they'll just stay in the in the gallery view the whole time. So the only time it went full screen was when somebody was sharing their screen. Oh no! And norm normally they have that speaker view. They they do spotlight. So either the person who was running the meeting didn't know, didn't think, or so I thought. Oh, okay. So this is where maybe I can contribute on that level to help to make a few tips and things. And I see yeah i'm i'm up and down you know i'm 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 depressed that she doesn't let me share it that that it wasn't done like that and yeah. then i see okay but i i can make my contribution i can make a suggestion and maybe it'll be i'm sure i mean i, I was in the breakout group with julia and she was really happy to meet me she said oh i heard somebody from the un was working now there i said yeah they wrote me in i made it clear that it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> But I think you can. I think you can be able to contribute. Um, I do understand why um, they're careful about. Um... Absolutely, absolutely. The fact that she even sent it to me was was for me. Okay, that proves to me I'm an insider. It's okay. They trust me, and I am not going to abuse that trust. Yes. So, however. I see that that material can be used internally for our own purposes of training one another. Yes. And that's, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot, a lot of people do need that um, kind of training. Last year, I don't know if you attended, there was like a photography course um, with, uh, they had a young lady from Africa, Suji, giving a phot photography course. It was two lessons and it was really nice. Um, it, it and it, it was not just I mean she's a little bit younger than me but it was everybody of all ages attending and that was a very very uh, useful um, education for everybody present so sometimes yeah we do need those little... yeah 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 that's good I mean um, my MG from South America also did a photography course once and invited me to or a video course and invited me to participate and that was um that was interesting and fun as well and i think there's definitely a lot of opportunity and it's so amazing to be with connected all over the world as a group of of women young and old all generations and how we can really learn from one another and connect to each other yeah that's the positive thing about covid yeah amazing yeah i'm pretty sure i would not have been um 
uh, part of women federation, especially in Africa, hierarchy is very important. Oh. So in order for me to have even received like um, an invitation for these special committees, it would have been permission at this level and that level, <sighs> and that level and that level. So COVID just opened up and put everybody on an equal level when it comes to accessing information. And actually possibly even gave you an advantage because of your media competence. Poss yes, yes, um, possibly that. Because in the past, it, it really, information used to trickle from the top all the way to the bottom. And when you're really at the bottom, sometimes you don't get any information. That's true, so yeah, yeah. With COVID, yeah, I don't know. That was the one wonderful thing about it. Yeah, and I you know, I was working in nuclear security and before in Australia, I was working with the Professors World Peace Academy and uh, we had some professors of nuclear, uh, nuclear physicists. And here in Austria, the population general official, officially is anti-nuclear. They don't believe in nuclear energy, nuclear power, or anything like that. And the International Atomic Energy Agency works to provide safety and security measures for countries that do decide to go nuclear mm -hmm. and to make sure that all of the safety measures are upheld. And we really are now focusing on nuclear energy as the clean energy provider to resolve the energy issues. And it's fascinating now when I see, and, and that's really being promoted now at the COP27 in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And now with the situation in the Ukraine, it's yeah. fascinating. I see more and more people are becoming aware how nuclear can be the alternative energy or not, not alternative, but supplementary. It yes. is it, it is providing regardless of wind and, uh, and rain and, and, and sunshine levels. The mm. nuclear energy is a stable component. Mm. And I'm just fascinated to see how what looks to us like something bad and really mm. negative can turn around into something completely positive, just like you said about the COVID. Yes. And now I see this war in the Ukraine and, and people are coming to reconsider the contribution that nuclear can make and lots of other issues as well. And it's, it's fascinating to... It to reinforce the positive attitude, the yes, absolute yes. faith, knowing yes. God is working. God yes. is working. God is right there. That's interesting. And um, speaking about the Professor's World Peace Academy, does it still exist? They've they've tried to revive it just now because of, I can't remember which country, Some uh, it was very active in Japan. Mm -hmm. And just last week there was some initiative to... Uh, revive and to reconnect and th there is definitely something going on to um, perhaps not in every country because in every country we haven't had the members who've been really taking care of these professionals but um, yeah it's it's still up and running yeah in, so, okay, I will tell you why I'm asking. I've been wondering about it for years since I was doing COP in South Africa because there was, um, we went into one university and we were quite successful and the VC really did support us and there was a couple of professors who were um, interested in COP, but because, as, as you're saying, you know, internally, we're not able to take care of the situation, it sort of died down. But now the very same university is working with Women Federation in South Africa. So um, we were, you know, the environmental project I was involved in in South Africa. We were doing uh, cloth nappies. Oh, okay. No, I haven't heard much about um, it. So we were, so it was inspired by this uh, Women Federation Global Committees. So we met up with um, a lady, she's a queen of a chiefdom, her husband is the chief, and she's also a member of parliament in South Africa. And um, she, she, she met with uh, my mom through another member. Um, and she's she's really interested in what we're doing. And she offered us 20 hectares of land in her village to do something good 
you know, because she 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 wants to help her villagers, you know. And it was very fascinating because most times when you're gonna see um a chief or whatever, you first have to take gifts for them, you know. And she before we before we promised anything, you know, she 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 said that she was in church and her reverend got some sort of revelation. So she she knew that she was gonna meet good people through that. So she, it, that was touching. So already she gave us this uh, big piece of land and we started with um, cloth nappies. And then we had a gentleman who had been mentored by my mom to do environmental work. He's an environmental consultant. And at that time she was still um, a nurse at the university and she got one young academic, a young man as well. So we formed a team and we have this dream of having a green village. So they did a feasibility study and we started with a cloth nappy project to look at the pollution. And um, last week we managed to meet with, when I say we, I'm talking about the team in South Africa. They managed to meet with the university. So there were three professors and one, um, one person with a doctorate. And they're really fascinated by Women Federation. And I feel like, um, they can feel the internal uh, greatness of what uh, Women, Women Federation represents. And we were even worried, should we use Women Federation or not? Because the national leader of Women Federation, that side in South Africa, she's worried that we might not handle the responsibility or whatever. But they were fascinated and by the fact that this is a women's um, organization. And they, they're coming on board, they're going to adopt the village, they're going to use the land for experimental farming, which is a whole lot of opportunities. You know, it's, you know, we, we do not really have to spend money, but we will see a big change. And of course, this is still um, very much fresh and in the making. So I was thinking, as you're mentioning the Professor's World Peace Academy, I immediately thought about those people to say, you know, those would be good candidates, maybe. That is so interesting because PWPA is very much like some of our other organisations in the past, very male dominated. And what was the photo I saw recently? Oh, yeah, even the event we had in Vienna last week at the Diplomatic Academy. I, I looked at the photo of all of the men on the stage, you know, and then I realised that even the woman that was there was dressed in black and white, that there was actually one woman there, but she was dressed like the men. And um, PWPA, that would be really great if we could put in the feminine impact, the feminine impulse into that, and that would definitely fit. That's definitely where, where things are going now academically. That's uh, you, you've, you've planted a seed in my mind. I'll um, try, try and see what's going on what I can find out and um that would definitely be something worth following up and um you know because the other thing is with first ladies for peace that's like the only thing in UPF where the women's federation now Carolyn is officially no longer the WFWP president yeah. but responsible for ILFLP and it still feels like a stepchild under UPF. When when they talk about the organisations in UPF, yes. they often forget it. They leave it out oh. completely and they don't always um, mention the women's projects and there are still other areas that are totally dominated by men. Uh, it depends. I mean, it, it, it varies. In, um, in New York, Lynn Walsh is uh, Secretary General of the NGO Committee on the Family at the UN and she represents UPF. Okay. And um, yeah, I I see um, UPF also trying to introduce the women, but the our I'm surprised at what's happening now, where it looks like some leaders are trying to give WFWP a place again, whereas I felt like we've been forgotten and UPF is taken over and the only place for women in UPF is the ILFLP. And I think if you're only talking about first ladies, I mean, I think of my, my contacts at the UN who are 
heads of, of departments of nuclear security and, and other top level women people, but they they are so specialized mm. and um academic and scientific and perhaps doesn't always cater to the needs of of the 50% of the world that is female who are not all academics. And we yes. need to really think in terms of how we can yes. represent and, and cater to them. So there's a few questions there that we can still talk about. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yes. Well, I'm glad we've got the recording because I didn't take any notes this time. I'm often writing lots of things down when we're meeting because I think we've covered quite a few things just now and that's been that's brought me to a to a higher frequency, to a better level, I must admit. It's been great talking to you. Okay. I'm also glad. I'm I'm also glad because I'm also getting um, you know, I'm also having some ideas, especially with um yeah what is happening in 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 south africa as well i think there is opportunity there i i'm what i love about our movement is we have connection international connection okay i'm from australia and for example the international assembly and balavance Mm. He was my member when I was centre leader in Adelaide, you know, so oh. when she starts talking about old, old Aussie, you know, I think, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And it's just so great to be connected across the globe and to have these connections and to to come from different places and be in different places and to know that we have these uh, these other ways of connecting also on a very high level. It's It's very inspiring. Yes. I, I think Women Federation is definitely up there. And um, I notice it when we go speak to external people, like this um, um, queen who's also a member of parliament. She, it's almost like she took it as, not almost, she actually did take Women Federation as something very, very high. She saw it for what it truly is and sometimes for us on the inside we tend to think oh it's just women federation and um i was also amazed at the response of these professors as well they also took women federation as something very very high and they were even excited like they were the privileged ones to be invited into something like this that's why it's so important that we get a handle on all of these administrative stuff that we really get get it under control and really get the professionals up there. And that is where uh, we always, um, that is definitely our weak point. Um, so they will say, oh, okay, we would like to meet with you and discuss um, maybe contracts or the legalities. We don't have that capacity. You know, it's, it's in South Africa, the capacity is very small. It's really just a handful of women volunteers. Yeah, but um, with the international support, it gives us credibility. Exactly. And I think we need to focus on that, recognise we have the connections, we have the relationships. And if I can't do it myself, there's always someone I can reach out to who will know someone who knows someone who can help me. Mm. And we need to be really utilize that networking capacity yes yeah yeah okay i'm inspired i'm gonna um get that set up and and share it and um um i don't know how to reach out to nancy and to anna is when we don't get them into this meeting and i think they didn't look at the recordings of the meetings that we've had so far but um the same as for my I mean I'm setting up my business now and I need I know I need to do newsletters and uh, regular postings I used to do lives two or three times a week and I haven't for the last few weeks so on on I used to do Facebook lives and um I recorded something today which I didn't do live it was while I was just after the dentist and I uh, thought I would post it later with an article. So I've been holding myself back thinking just the live isn't enough. I need a website with an article explaining things and adding the links for people to know where to find us and what to do. So 
that's I'm working on that. And um, this is a good time. I'm in a number of, um, I'm in a mastermind group. I meet every Tuesday with a few people and I have a, a buddy that I meet a couple of times a week. And I really appreciate this meeting as another anchor for me hmm. for accountability and making goals and setting up um, procedures. And I think for me, I will commit to, to get something underway for our communication as a team and to see how we can go further with that. Um, the other thing was what I never addressed. That was the other, yeah, because Mitty called me last week and asked for the social media team every week to produce the 30-second video of WFWP activities for the OIME, for the OIME news. Oh, for the, okay. Um, so I just got a message from Carolyn that she sent me the video of the um, Geneva event and it's fairly late, I just saw the message from her because Mitty wanted us to report about that already last week and then when the response came, well, nobody could do anything. It was just too much. Um, I need to see how, how to deal with that as well, but also how to respond back to Mitty as a team because I feel there again just taking it for granted, oh, we've got a social media team. They yes, can I just do this, this, this. So... Um... We're still forming ourselves. We're still in the process of trying to understand what it is we're required to do, what we can do. Yeah. And yeah. that's how I felt. And so with her request, you know, suddenly already cataloging what she wants, I thought, um, I can't even say I've got a team until I've met everybody. You know, I can't, I can't promise anything and I'm not committing to it when I can't do it. And I'm not committing on behalf of anybody else who hasn't committed to me. So, um, but this is got to be a two way conversation. So these are the things that I need to get back to, to Mitty and to make it clear, but then to, to work with what we've got. I don't believe in, in a negative, in a deficient, um, um, in a scarcity attitude. I really believe we need to look at the abundance that we do have mm. and work with what we can do. Yes, and I think, yeah, we I will post it in the group as well that we need to um, come together to decide who does what because what if, for example, we find that we don't really have someone with a capacity to do a video? Yeah, good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, a, as an example, yeah. so it, it is important that we also let the rest of the team or the rest of Women Federation know um, this is what we can do as um, the social media team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's exciting okay i'm 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 inspired i'm surprised to say uh i i sort of opened the channels just with a um a faint hope that maybe something will come but i'm i'm really inspired now <laughs> well something always comes right <laughs> yeah yeah i will i'll i'll post something uh, after the meeting and um, hopefully during the week, we will be able to commit to a time where we can all come together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'll do what I said, set up a web page and I'll share the video of this meeting as a, it, it, probably with the WhatsApp as well, but I'm planning to put that into a website where we can click on any one of those meetings and, and get some, some historicity to see what we, where we're at and how we're growing. I mean, it's exciting even to document how we're coming together because this is historical. This has never happened before. Yes. It's it's important and it's great. It's intergenerational. It's international. Mm -hmm. It's on the OIME level and it's it's a new project that hasn't happened before. Yes. And um, I just remembered as you're talking about the, the message from uh, Mitty, was it um, an agreed upon message or where is that message? 
Did you post it or was it Kenya? I shared um, in our social media group. I summarized. She ended up sending me a an email summary of what um, her interpretation of what our meeting was, and I had already made this summary for myself, which I shared. Oh yes, I do. I do see it. Um, yeah, I, okay, I see. Yes, I remember the message about the. Um, the website, yes. So in this, were you part of the meeting where this was agreed upon? On um, the, the message that I, when was it? Posted on the, on the, yeah, on the 9th of the 11th, it was just a phone call from Mitty to me, which really surprised me that she individually tried to call me and I was also already in the middle of all sorts of other things. So... That came at a time when um, I thought, uh-huh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I just felt I needed to to record that because a lot of things just happen where people are asked to do things and it, it's not an official. What really gets me about the other Women's Federation meetings, they're not recorded and typically the minutes are not taken. So I'm really grateful when you do the minutes mm -hmm. and um, lately... It, another meeting, Mitty recently sent out minutes and I thought, oh, okay, that's a new level for me now because until now we've had meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings and people keep talking about the same things over and over and over and over again and nobody does anything. I, I also did notice that. I mean, a little bit earlier, I think I was taking um, some of the minutes, but I would get lost. Um, the meeting goes on for a little bit long and then at some point I'm a little bit tired and I get lost in what is being said and I'm not able to continue but I they, would... they don't have a clear agenda they, they somebody brings up something uh at, at a tangent to what we're talking about and instead of finishing the one topic they're off at a tangent and then there's no clear decision made or expressed on that particular point and I think this type of um, meeting structure needs to be practiced and reinforced and the consciousness needs to be uh, stressed about that. Yes and maybe uh, with new people chairing the meetings things can change because mm -hmm. we'll then be um, there will be a structure for everybody for everyone to follow when they're chairing meetings. Yep 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 lots of hope lots of hope. <laughs> Anything else you want to say? Mm, no. Um, I think I've said everything. Um, yeah, the the general assembly, it was very nice. Um, I was impressed with the attendance. Yeah, it was amazing, wasn't it? It was and good. There was some watching on social media as well. I think it was YouTube, right? It was yeah, that was that surprises me too that um the international does have the live streaming on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Was, and then somebody posted it on. I got the link to that because somebody posted it on Facebook, but they weren't doing the Facebook live. That surprised me because I would I I typically I I can't do YouTube live streaming yet because I haven't got enough people on our YouTube channel. You still don't have a hundred. Um, but I think they've changed the rules in the meantime. And I haven't even tried it since then, because, but they've changed the um, YouTube has made quite a few changes recently. No, I still don't have a hundred, um, but I haven't been marketing there either. Um, but um, so I typically go live on Facebook and um, international seems to, I mean, it's good that they do it through YouTube. It's, it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what's your specialty, your social media forte? Um, I had suggested Twitter. And have you got a Twitter account? Have you done anything there? No, only on my personal Twitter okay. account. Okay. It's important that we have an e a Woman Federation email address and the Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everything can be linked to that specific email address for continuity. So uh, it's not clear to me what that address should be because, um, I mean, like I said, I haven't done the research for, I mean, Mitty and Anne both asked about the 
Google Drive, which they wanted the address WFWP Europe. And as far as I know, that was the address, the email that Elizabeth had, which we, which is not available to us. Because even when that message came out, I thought, okay, well, how do you expect me to set up that Google Drive if you don't send me the part? But I didn't ask for the password because it's nice to have a Gmail address, but to have access, you need the password. And what I've seen with the other accounts that I'm dealing with on Gmail you have to then have the two-step authentication and you need to confirm your account with the phone number, with the password all the time. And I keep getting that even on my own accounts because I use my WFWP one and my, my own one. And so every time I change from one to the other, I'm being asked again to authenticate. Yes, and it's, then it's quite um, easy the authentication and um, Google has, I think they have like a recovery process, uh, re recovery pro process where you can use another person's email address for the recovery. So I think we, we should do something like that where we have an email account that, that is central to everything. And then we have maybe a phone number of one of our members as a like a recovery phone number for the password and an additional email of also one of our members that we can use as an a recovery email address they have changed the conditions when when i set up the gmail account for toastmasters they weren't they didn't even have two step authentication so it's become complicated for us because i ended up buying a, a sim card just for the Toastmasters Club so that we could authenticate. And I wanted everybody, all the executive to have access to that Gmail account. Um, in the meantime, every Gmail address has to be attached to a real person's name. So the phone number that you give for the authentication has to be registered under a real person. And that is attached to that address. But then... I don't know how recently, but since then they have uh, introduced group accounts for organisations and they even do a lot of stuff. And even in terms of the storage space, they are offer free storage for NGOs. So there's a lot of things there that are, that are available and it's just a matter of deciding, okay, which account will it be? And um, for example, with the Toastmasters YouTube channel, I ended up, making myself an admin with the other address. So I now can upload the videos to the YouTube channel of the Toastmasters Club from my own address. I don't have to log in as on that Gmail account that I set up because I gave the authentication to somebody else. And I every time I try to go into the Gmail account of the Toastmasters Club, the authentication message goes to the person who's got the club phone. The, and she's oh. she's sometimes traveling she's in France okay. and she doesn't answer her phone and I want to go in and the same with our women's federation uh, website it was um um oh, what's her name Joanna in Norway who set up that account so when I tried to go into the website and into the gmail account for that she got the she got the message somebody's trying to get into your account and I couldn't access it because she wasn't answering her messages, you know, and then 10 hours later, she, Lily, were you trying to get into the account? Yes, thank you. I was, but I haven't got time now. And it got, it just that, got frustrating. That could, that, that could work if we are organized. So, for example, um, we can pick one person and we use their phone number. So as I said, we could use yeah one person, we use their phone number and another person, we use their um, email address for recovery. So say, for example, we use my phone number and six months down the line, I'm no longer part of Women Federation or I cannot do it anymore. Then we will change it to the next person's phone number. But at any given point in time, we would have um, someone's personal email address and another person's. And that's a uh, good idea. That's personal, good idea. Because you always, they always give you the two options, the phone or the or the email. Yeah. Yeah. Say it's yeah. us in the group, it is uh Kiamin's phone number and I am Anais's email address. So at any given point in time, we have two people 
And the moment that one of them is not able to, you know, take the responsibility anymore, we change it to okay. another. That's a good idea. Okay, I'll put that in the in the proposal when I, I'll I'll put together the proposal for the storage space and all of that. And um, okay, good idea. Great, great, great. I know this because um, my mom has um, two sisters, and I am running their Gmail accounts. <laughs> So on my phone, on my phone, you would think I'm running like a Gmail business. I have so many email email addresses. So I know the recovery pro, uh, process quite well. <laughs> <laughs> I, tr I can't remember one of the accounts. I deactivated the two-step authentication. And we tried to do that on the Toastmasters account so that all the members could access it without having to say, hey, this is me and it's okay. But every time you go on a new computer, I mean, it, it sends you the message and wants a, an authentication. So anyhow, okay. Yes. So with that, as long as we know who the person is yeah, yeah. and we can just go call that person, um, I need to do this and yeah. this, you just set up a time when you're both available and yeah. it's quick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Put that in the minutes. <laughs> I'll just put there. Because I, I don't, I think that's the most important thing before we can really go with the social media. And then when it comes to the, um, oh, the, the Facebook page doesn't need um, an, a Gmail account. And then YouTube, who's, which email address is our YouTube channel connected? Currently, I'm the only one who's admin on the YouTube channel. And I'd be, and just as I saw that it was no problem to make other people editors or admins on the um, Toastmasters YouTube channel, then I can do the same for Women's Federation. So if you want to upload videos or do anything on the YouTube channel, I'm quite happy to share, uh, to give you the admin rights as well. Oh, I, I, I don't even know how to. Okay, anybody, so we'll, we can, that, that's um, um, on the on the agenda that anybody who, who has that access or who wants that access has the capacity, then I can make that available. And which email address is the YouTube channel linked to? I think I added my WFWP email. Otherwise, it's my personal email, my Gmail, personal. Okay. Yeah. So I think once we sort out the email address, then it will be easy to set yep. up yep. everything else, like yep. the Twitter and I think it was Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will be easy to set up everything else. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Okay. Good. So you don't know of anybody who's got, because, I mean, I have done videos and, and I've done voiceovers for video reports. Tony here in Vienna is really good at editing the videos and I've started learning and doing more and more. I mean, I can do not really professional looking edits, but sometimes they're okay. So I usually shit for example when you look at all the videos on our youtube channel many of them are because some of them are quite old are really bad recordings because typically i didn't edit anything i just posted the stuff the way it was recorded and more and more i'm getting around to, to editing some stuff but not professionally not with titles or anything like that but slowly when i invest the time and when i'm consumed with other things i don't have that time but when I invest the time, then I'm getting better and better and I can manage to make a 30-second clip of uh, of a three-hour meeting. So that, um, yeah, I have done that recently. So mm. and then just to do a voiceover. What I like is, um, well, actually I managed it the last time for the one of the, I think it was the ILFLP event. Yeah. Um, anyhow, th this is where there's a lot of room for, for discussion, for sharing, for improvement. Exactly. It's all a matter of just where we are and recognising we can improve. It's not a matter of, okay, this is no good. It's a matter of here we are and we can get better. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Then um, for... 
if we want to take seriously Mitty's request for the reporting for the OIME, then mm. probably it's a good idea for us to feed back that then we need to receive the information that wants to be reported because when nobody's telling us what should be in that 30 second clip which WFWP Europe which means all the countries of Europe wants to report then um then the, we're not going to be able to produce anything so this week Carolyn has sent me the stuff from Geneva which I haven't looked at yet so perhaps I can make a 30 second clip out of that and um, I don't know whether the General Assembly should also be a part of the, I mean, the fact that we had such mm. participation, I thought it was, um, I, I thought it was nice to see you there. That was really good. And um, Carolyn's uh, tribute exactly. as well, yeah. that's very important. And the recognition by international, yeah, 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 true. So that should probably also come into a report. Okay. Good. Okay. We have a goal, a vision, passion. Yeah. I'll get there. I think so. I think once we have an email address, that will be such a big uh, achievement. Okay. Yeah. So you prioritize Gmail address as the most important thing right now. Yes, that will be central to everything. And um for example, if there is um, something that needs to be reported, um, then whoever it is from their own countries could upload it onto the Google Drive or, you know. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okie dokie. Good. When I breathe and think, okay, I've got seven days to work through that. I can see that coming together. Yeah. Okay. All right, Lily. Thank you, Kafube. Now tell me again how to say your name because I don't know what what the difference was between what I said, but I know it wasn't exactly how you told me. Le, le Pepe. Le, le Pepe. That's how you say my surname. But even when you say it like that, it's really okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> say it again. Le Pepe. Le Pepe. Yeah, so it's more flat. Uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Kefirve. So Thank I'll see you again soon. All the best. Thanks Thank for your support. Bye. Thanks for Have coming. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye. Bye.